Hello my angels, welcome back to Vlogmas and welcome back to the dog room actually. Today's vlog is going to be a little bit of a messy one but we are going to be making something simply magical and actually a little bit different. So today we are going to be making our very own at home reefs but we are not going to be making your normal reef. We are going to be making a candy cane reef. I saw them online. I've never done them. So it is going to be a little bit of a trial and error with you. And I just thought that they looked absolutely beautiful and that they were really different. We do have the traditional reefs on the front doors. However, I wanted to create something that I could hang above the Arga. I want to do three candy canes. So, that is what we are going to be making together today. So I have actually gone ahead slightly just so I knew what I was doing and that I could <laughs> actually explain properly as to what I was doing and then we can actually create the other two together. So as I said, I jumped ahead slightly and I've already created one of the candy canes in terms of the foliage. And I think it's looking pretty good. It's not looking quite like a candy cane just yet, but once we decorate it, I think it will look absolutely beautiful. So let's talk through the items that you are going to need. Now I bought everything off of Amazon, bar the foliage. So you are going to need the candy cane wires. You are going to need to get yourselves gardening wire and pliers. Now I bought these off of Amazon. They actually came in a set and they are incredible. So it's just a tiny little pack of garden wire and the prettiest little pink pliers. So I will pop all of the details as per usual in that description box down below to the exact items that I bought on Amazon. I then bought this beautiful, dark, rich burgundy velvet bow. I think there's nothing better than a big oversized bow at Christmas. Just gorgeous. I then bought some frosted berries. Now these come on little wires, as you can see. So I'm going to literally just stick them into our candy cane, but you could also use these on so many different things. They are so handy and they actually come, I think around about 250 in a packet. So we have a fair few in here. And then I bought this fantastic little box of beauties. So it comes with the gorgeous dried oranges. You've got the cinnamon sticks in there, cardamom. Look at how sweet these little acorns are. You've got pine cones. And then of course the glossy red berries, which I think are going to make it pop. It also comes with natural rope, which I love. So we can actually tie all of these things together and then beautifully place them onto our candy canes and then wire them into place so that they don't fall. So that is what we are going to be doing together today. It is going to be so much fun. It's going to be so festive and let's get straight into this. Now, first things first, I'm going to pop that over there just in case I <laughs> knock it off and everything goes everywhere. Now, I picked up these foliage bundles from our local Christmas tree barn. We have an incredible uh, Christmas tree barn up at Christmas Common. Can you believe it? <laughs> A Christmas tree barn at Christmas Common. So if you are local to me and that is sort of Henley, Marlow area, then definitely pop up to the Christmas barn because their Christmas trees are epic they are truly incredible and they have such a passion and it is a family business which i love so they had a few of these bundles which are fantastic if you are wanting to make your own reefs or your own candy cane reefs now First things first, we need to prepare our little branches. We're obviously not going to be using this entire branch, so get yourselves a pair of pliers or a pair of secateurs, scissors, you'll need some sharp scissors. And basically what I do is I just cut the branches off. And this one here, again, I'm probably not going to use a branch this big, so I'm going to just chop his little, oh, sounds so mean, his little arms off and I'm going to pop them to one side because we are going to put these all together 
and then they are going to create the base of our candy cane. So it's also important, keep all the offcuts because you might need them. You might need to fill in an area or just tuck it in or even sort of bend it round the candy cane section. So all of those sort of ugly pieces can be used as well as the beautiful ones. So I'm just preparing this. Oh, and this is actually a really, really wonderful way to spend an afternoon when it is bucketing cats and dogs. It is absolutely frightful out there and it's also not too expensive to do. So I bought two large bundles of foliage and it was £10 and then I think everything else cost me around about £25. So if you make three, I actually personally think that that is great value and you can also dry them. So we could dry these completely and have them for next year. Ugh, got my second tears oh, aren't quite big enough for that branch. Ooh, she's a big one. Right, let's take those little branches off. Okay, I think I've probably got enough for our next candy cane. I just thought that they were really different. And um, you know me, I like to be different. And I like to do new things. So, let's start making this. So I've got my candy cane wire here and I'm going to be placing them on the inside. So if I come a little bit closer, you'll be able to see that it is curved on the outside and then it has the indentation on the inside. So we are actually going to be placing the pines within the inside of the frame and it just makes it easier to be able to place it in and then secure with the wire. But first, we are going to create the piece that goes at the top. And it's really important to wire the pieces together first. It just makes it easier and more secure when we place it onto that candy cane wire structure. Right, let's pick some pretty pieces. I think that looks really nice. I think it looks very symmetrical. So that is going to be the top of our candy cane. And simply, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Take my gardening wire, I'm gonna take a little bit off, take my pliers, snip it, and then I'm going to just wire these three pieces together, like so. Don't have to be pretty, because the great thing about this gardening wire is that it is, in fact, green, and you can't see it. So, as easy as that, those three very pretty pieces are now one, and we are going to place it into the frame like so. So it's gonna sit perfectly within our wire frame. I'm now going to pop that onto the top. I'm gonna to unwire a bit more of my gardening wire and then I'm going to secure it to the frame. Now I feel like the most important one is the first one and it's really important to actually wire it to the top of the frame. I'm just putting that through there and I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So you have the top of the frame here and with the first lot of foliage, it's really important that you actually tie it to the very top frame like so and that just stops it from sliding down. So I'm going to just entwine it around this wire structure here. Take it, oh, I'm stuck there. There we go, I need to, it's so fiddly. And then we're going to pop it over the top there and then make sure that it's tight around the top of that wire. And there we go. That is our first part of our candy cane <laughs> wreath done. So I'm literally going to do, step by step, I'm going to make another little section to go at the top. I think he's very pretty, but he's quite long. So I'm gonna keep them for the next one, I believe. And then I'm going to take a few more. I'm going to wire them together and we're going to just continue to work our way down the structure. And it looks so beautiful. And you really start to see the candy cane once you get down to the bottom. So I'm wiring that together. I'm gonna to place it into the frame like so. 
and as you can see it's all sitting upwards and starting to really take shape. Another thing to note that if you place it on and it's not sitting in the right position you can actually just start to bend it the right way and they do stay together because you have in fact wired them. So I don't know about you but I think that that looks fantastic. I'm going to take a little bit more wire and I'm going to just secure him to our frame and you know this definitely doesn't have to be pretty mine most certainly <laughs> isn't I'm literally just bending the wire any old way just to make sure that it is fully secure and isn't going to fall off when they are hanging in place there we go bending that around you can wear gloves for this if you want to however you know it's just the little branches and just to be careful of the bottoms of the wires other than that it's not sharp okay so he is now completely secure and that again is the next compartment so I'm going to go ahead and pop this on a time-lapse until we get down to the bottom and then we will create the next piece and then work our way up so that they join together so I will see you in just a moment Okay, so I have now got to the bottom of our candy cane structure before it does that little loop around the bottom. And then we start actually working the other way around. So I think that that is really looking very pretty. So you've got the beautiful bit at the top. I'm thinking to pop the big ribbon here or potentially here, but it's actually going to hang like that. So maybe we put the big ribbon there or there. I don't know, we'll have to see what it looks like in a minute. So let's create the bottom of our candy cane. So we need to take quite pretty pieces. So I think he is beautiful, he's very even. I think this is also stunning, but I think potentially a bit too big. So, hmm, who wants to be the star of the show? I think he's gorgeous. So we've got a few pieces that look absolutely exquisite. I'm literally just placing the really pretty pieces on top of one another, just so that we create quite a thick end to it. And then again, I'm just taking wire and just tying them together. And that there is going to be the end of our candy cane. And I'm just going to place it within the frame like so. And then what we can do is actually snip a few of the little branches if necessary. So I'm going to pop some wire around him and make sure that it's fully secure. And then we are simply just going to fill in the gaps. And that's why we can keep all of the different pieces of the, um, of the branches. Now, if you do have a fresh tree in your house and there's too many branches at the bottom, you may have a stand, you may have a tree stand, or you may have like a blanket at the bottom. There are just too many branches. You might even have just far too many gifts <laughs> and need to get rid of a few branches, but don't throw them away because they are absolutely perfect for making at home wreaths. So, as you can see, that is our structure really starting to take place. And all we have to do now is just fill in the gap. And that is where those little ugly duckling pieces come in really handy. And actually you'll find that a lot of them are a little bit wonky, but they're perfect for this. So I'm literally just going to place him in there. I might even give him a friend. There we go, he can go in there as well. Perfect. I'm going to wire those two together. Here we go. And he is pointing in the perfect direction. There we go. That is perfect. I'm just going to 
going to place him in there, push him within that frame. There we go, and I'm going to wire him into place. Okay, so the last few little pieces are underway, and it's really just about creating like a seamless sculpt around, just so that you don't see where it starts or where it ends. And I think that is the secret to a good reef. Certainly when you're making the traditional circular ones, it needs to look super, super seamless. And trust me, you do not need to be a pro or even a creative to do this. It really is foolproof. And that's why you need to get yourself some green gardening wire because Trust me, if you look super, super close up, like here, you'll see that my wiring skills are not up to scratch, but it doesn't matter because you're not seeing it. Now I'm gonna take just a few extra little branches and I'm going to just tuck them into the wire frame and potentially into the other pieces of wire that are in there and then secure them. And we're just going to fill it out slightly more so that there are no gaps. And then it is time to decorate them, which I am so excited for. I cannot wait to even hang them. I think they're going to look so pretty above the Arga. And with all the other Christmas decorations, it's going to be so special. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is our candy cane base finished. So hopefully you can see that. So you can see really the structure around here. I may trim off a couple of these little branches just so that you can see that definite design of the candy cane. And that looks fantastic. I think once we decorate them, they will really, really take shape. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly make the third one and then we are going to decorate all three together. And that is our last candy cane structure finished. I am so excited to decorate these. I think they're going to look incredible. So let's have a little bit of a tidy. We're gonna still need our secateurs and gardening wire. I'm going to have a bit of a tidy because there are pine leaves absolutely everywhere. Goodness gracious me, I'm gonna to have to have a serious session with the hoover. <laughs> Okay, so I'm actually going to pop that down there for a moment. We need a clean space so that we can fully focus on our candy canes. <sighs> Let's do this. So, here we go. I'm going to pop that one there. We do want them to relatively look similar. So I'm going to place them like, like how they're going to be hung. So I'm gonna flip them up the other way. And then I'm going to have my decorations in front of me. Okay, so I've had a little bit of a mooch of our decorations and I've had a little think as to how we are going to secure them. I suddenly thought, how am I going to secure the oranges without super glue? I don't have a glue gun. So what I'm actually going to do is pop a little string that they have put within the box through the hole of the orange at the end and then secure them. But what I'm going to do first is actually use my frosted berries and I'm just going to almost burrow them into the pine leaves like so, just so that they look as though they're amongst those gorgeous little branches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to place my frosted berries roughly in the same place on on each candy cane and I think I'm going to put, they come in little bunches 
and you can completely unravel the bunches and use them as singular berries. But I actually think that the bunches look really quite sweet. And that is actually how they grow on a tree. So I think it's quite nice to keep them in their natural form. So I'm gonna place them into my candy canes and put them roughly where I think I would like to keep them. And then I am going to secure them with the wire all together. Gosh, what a bit of a tangling situation going on. I've also just noticed that you're not straight. <laughs> I hope that hasn't been like that the entire time. It probably has, but oh well. <laughs> you guys I'm sure can see and get the gist. So I'm going to bend that that way and he is gonna go and sit in there. And then we're gonna get our gardening wire and we're going to secure them at the back. So, I'm gonna unravel a touch of this. Snip, on, snip, snip. And then I'm going to hold those on, figure out where they're going to be secured to. And then I'm simply just gonna poke the wire through. Oh gosh, it's a lot fiddlier than I anticipated. So I'm going to rummage through there and I am just going to try and secure them to, I think what I might do is even put the wire, wrap the wire around the berries first, like so. And then I've got more chance of placing them within there and then wrapping the wire around the back. As I said, I've never done this before, so I'm really learning on the job with you. But so far, so good. I hope the end result will look as beautiful as I'm hoping it will. But those are my berries in there. I'm now just gonna pull them out slightly, tuck the branches around. I think that looks very pretty. So I'm gonna scatter them around here. I'm gonna make sure the pines are in the middle. And I think they look so sweet. Okay, I'm going to fast forward this little bit because I don't want to bore you to death with my berries. And I will come back and we will start placing the oranges, the cinnamon, the acorns, the chestnuts, and those gorgeous glossy red berries together. Okay, I think my concentration face must be so unattractive. I've been like, <gasps> and there are a fair few people out there who love to screenshot me with seven chins. I thank you for that. <laughs> so our berries are finally fixed. So I will share them with you. So that is what they look like. They are relatively in the same position, just so that they look cohesive when they are hanging above the agar. Okay, so I've spent a little bit of time wiring my oranges. In hindsight, it would have been fantastic if I also bought a glue gun, but I don't have one. And it's kind of one of those things that I'm like, do I really need it? So I have figured out a way that I am going to tie on the oranges. And as you can see, I've spent a little bit of time just popping wire onto the ends of those oranges and that's how we're going to fix them to our reefs and then to our candy canes and then I have also wired together and done a pretty little bow on the cinnamon sticks so let's start placing them in I've designed it so that there's going to be roughly around three oranges in each candy cane and I'm just going to make sure that they are evenly sort of dotted around. And again, this wire is so handy because you just cannot see it once they are placed onto the uh, structure itself and especially around all of this foliage. So I'm just going to just wrap them around and as simple as that, our oranges are on. So I am going to just make sure that they are completely secure. That one looks like he's a bit wobbly, yes. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure he's completely wrapped around something under there. Maybe this one here. Yeah, that looks a little bit more sturdy. Let's get you acquainted to your new friend. You wrapped around him. Gosh, 
It's also green in there, you can't actually see <laughs> where the wire is. I must say this really is rather fiddly, but I think that looks fantastic. Right, I'll take off that random ribbon. There we go. Now let's place the next three. And again, you can really gauge this as to the oranges. So the smaller oranges would go around the bend. And then I've actually got a double orange, which I think looks really pretty. I'm going to pop him on there. And you can literally just place them on to see how they're going to look and whether you're happy with their positioning. I'll pop this big one down here. He's going to look fantastic amongst those berries. I think that's so pretty. I'm going to bury him there and I'm going to pop that one up there. Right, let's fix these. And the more you fix it, actually the more it all really, really starts to come together and just ensuring that nothing is going to drop off once it's hung. Last year we had these beautiful wreaths, they were professionally done and they had a few of our beautiful ball balls on them and oh, you won't believe it, the, um, the hook that the reef was on actually gave way because of the weight of them and there goes all of our beautiful balls. <laughs> it was not a good day, but you know what, those things happen, but it's important to make sure that the equipment that you're using is suffice to the item that you are making. Right, that one looks fantastic in there. And I just love how it's a combination of fresh and faux. And you can dry these oranges yourself. You don't need to buy the bundle. And actually, if you aren't into super fiddly things, then I would actually recommend buying these little bundles. You know you can get the ones that are sort of like this and then they attach the acorn on and it's all ready for you and all you have to do is just tie it. You don't have to waste time or wiring it together, then I would actually recommend that. However, if you do like to do things a little bit DIY and have fun and sort of play and fiddle and create, um, then I would suggest buying the box. I really feel like I'm channeling my inner Stacey Solomon. I don't know, I just feel like huh, I'm doing all my DIY. Hopefully I will do them justice. Right, let's now wrap this one around here. This one's definitely got a perfect place to be wired into. Where have you just come out? Oh, all this green, I can hardly see you. There we go. Wrap him around there. And he is in. Next we've got our rangies. Okay, let me make sure he's really pretty. Have also got to think about where we're going to have our bows. I think the bow's got to go there. Okay, so the bow's going to go, let's think about this, the bow is going to go there. So actually this orange is in the wrong position. He needs to go up a little bit. He needs to be attached up here. The bow's going to go there and the bow's going to go there. Fantastic. You are going to come in here look very pretty amongst those. Twiddle him around this one here. There we go. That looks gorgeous. Put him underneath the berries. And I think this one can come underneath here and attach to this big branch. Gosh, I'm really happy about how these have turned out. But <laughs> famous last words. Okay, so he's going to come up there like so. Gosh, I think that looks absolutely beautiful so far. So our oranges are on. Our frosted berries are in. Now it is time to add our cinnamon sticks. So I think I quite like to place them just on the top. I do quite like them to look full and luscious. And then I think what we'll do is we'll add our ribbon and then we will just dot the berries and the acorns around the edges. And I feel like that cherry red, hopefully you can see this, a few little more, the cherry red will really make it pop. And it will be like, and we do have lots of different elements of cherry red within our kitchen. And at Christmas, if you haven't got red in your household, then I give up, I give up. I'm like, Mother Santa Claus over here, get your red out. 
Oh my goodness me, I am losing my mind. Anyway, let's get wired. So I actually went ahead and I wired together my cinnamon sticks like so, just so that I can then wrap another piece of wire around, just fix it at the back like so, and then literally it doesn't have to be pretty at all because we are not gonna see it. So literally that is the back of my <laughs> cinnamon stick, but that is the front. And then I'm going to simply secure him onto our little candy cane. So he is going to go in there and I think that will look really pretty. So I'm going to find a little branch at the back and twiddle our wire around. There we go. And he's in there. And then it's important to keep holding it up just to make sure that they are hanging in the correct position. So he is perfect on there. And then going to pop those maybe that way. Yeah, I think that looks gorgeous. So we need to touch more wire. Attach it at the back. Pull him out slightly. Come on. You know you want to be with the cinnamon. <laughs> I would like to be nestled against the cinnamon. There we go. And he is. Oh, that's Steve outside. There we go. And that is our second cinnamon placed to perfection. And then we are going to take the last cinnamon stick. Where are you hiding? Hmm. Did I create the last cinnamon stick? I'm definitely sure I did. Okay, he's in there. Hmm. What have I done? Oh, <laughs> it's in place already. Oh my goodness me, what a silly sausage. Right. Talking of silly sausages, are you sneezing with mama? Rafi's having a little nap <laughs> in his little cubby hole. I will show you in a moment. Oh, he's so, so sweet. He's like, mummy, all of this Christmas malarkey, what is going on? Huh? And let's make sure he's fully secure. Yeah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. Now, my favorite bit of all. I want to show you a close up of just how beautiful this ribbon is. I did go a little bit spenny with the ribbon because there really is nothing like a gorgeous, rich, burgundy velvet ribbon at Christmas. I think it is absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to be creating enormous pussy bows to place at the top of our candy canes. I'm just going to go and find myself a pair of sharp scissors and then we will create these gorgeous bows together. This makes me so happy. So I've just been working out how long I need to cut the ribbon. So I've done the very first bow and as you can see it's slightly oversized and it is just so pretty. And then what I've done is I've just hooked a little bit of wire at the back and that is how we are going to secure it onto our candy canes. So let's make the other two bows and then we will fix them and then cut them into the perfect position. So I did actually in fact need quite a lot of ribbon to create that bow. So I think that's probably enough. You need to get yourself some very sharp scissors. Okay, so let's make this bow. So it always looks a little bit funky before it looks fabulous and you want to ensure that the velvet is on all sides. So what I do is I just tie a normal bow like so, and then I use my nails just to pull out the velvet. And then really what you do is you keep pulling the sides of the bow tight and then the ends. And then you can start to really, really pull out these gorgeous sides like so, and it really begins to start to take shape. Then what I'm gonna do is try and bend this one round so that the velvet is at the front. And then when it's hanging on the reef, you'll have all of that gorgeous dark burgundy ribbon at the front. 
you can also make these into hair bows. So you see online, <laughs> companies charging an absolute fortune for bows, which are absolutely beautiful and they are so beautifully made. But you can, if you want to, make your own bows at home. There we go. When I was a little girl, my mother used to make me bows because I'd always want a matching bow to an outfit. And as you can imagine, all my outfits were different colors and it would have cost an absolute fortune. <laughs> so my mother used to invest in beautiful ribbon and um, she would make me gorgeous little bows for my hair. Oh, those are the days. So how are we doing in terms of size? Hmm, this one is a lot larger. Okay, but you know what? I really like that one. It is dainty and it is pretty. So I think what I'm gonna do is have the big bows on the outside and have a little a dainty bow on the inside. So if that one was a little bit smaller, we need a lot more ribbon. Oh gosh, this is absolutely beautiful. Now let's make this big ribbon. Keep the velvet on the outside. There are real tips and tricks and hacks when it comes to creating bows. I don't know any of them. I just play with it until it looks pretty. That looks fantastic. And make sure that the velvet is at the front like so. And then you can pull it tight. And then you can start just pulling out those big pussy bow parts. And then as you can see, it looks really ugly like that. But then that's when you can start really pulling it into shape making sure that the velvet bit at the front is straight, those gorgeous little ties are looking pretty. Put this side in, and then I would actually take the other ribbon and just make sure that it is roughly the same size. There we go. That looks absolutely gorgeous. What do we think? Do we think that's similar? I would say that that is pretty similar. <laughs> Thank goodness for that. Right, now it is time to place them onto our candy canes. And I'm going to make sure, please excuse the poochies. They are very badly behaved. Excuse me. Mummy is vlogging and this is very bad. Hey Rafi, can't you tell them? Hey, what do you think big boy? So that is now fixed onto our candy cane reef. Oh, I love it, it looks so pretty. Okay, so that one is done. I'm now going to use the wire, fix it onto the back of the bow and then secure them onto the candy cane reefs and I'll be back in just a sec. Yeah, I'm so happy. This is how they look with their bows on. I think they look so pretty. I am going to trim their tails slightly and then we are going to place in the red berries and I think they are going to be finished and look phenomenal. In any of the gaps, what I'm going to do is actually begin to place a few of the red berries. And what I think I'm going to do is actually combine three of them together, twiddle their wires around, and then actually place them onto the reefs in threes. And I think that that will look really, really pretty. Now it's important that you actually do again wire them to the structure or to a branch otherwise if you just sort of like stick them in i fear that when you pop them up or if you're going to hang them they may fall out so just make sure that you are making sure things are secure when you place them onto the candy cane there we go those are our first berries attached so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just spend a little bit of time just tinkering around with them making sure that they're all positioned to perfection and then i will come back before we pop the acorns on just to show you i think it's really important when creating things like this that there really is a step by step but otherwise if i come back and show it to you finished you're going to be like lenora how did i do this and i always think that when when I'm watching tutorials, whether it's creating something or even a tablescape, I'm like, well, how did they do this? Or how did they do that? So if you, <laughs> so hopefully you are enjoying this. Do let me know in those comments down below and let me know if you make your very own candy cane reefs. I would love to see them. As always in floristry, I work in threes. So 
I have popped the three little red berries together and I've popped three of them onto our candy cane. So I'm going to put three lots of three onto each candy cane and then we're going to pop on the acorns and little pine cones. Our berries are on and they are looking so gorgeous. Now, believe it or not, we've still got a few more steps to do. We've got these gorgeous little acorns. Aren't they so sweet? So again, I'm gonna work in three. So I'm gonna do three. I've got enough. I've got three for this one. And hopefully one, two. Ooh, perfect. It's almost as though they read my mind. Three for this one and they already have little wires on the ends, which is so handy. So I'm literally just going to hook them on to any area that looks as though it has a gap. So let me show you what this looks like. Our berries are on and our little acorns are going into those little gaps. And I think it looks so beautiful. I'm thinking you need to touch more color up here, but that's fine because we've got a little bit more to add. Even thinking I could pop a few more frosted berries in here. And I think that that would look absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna pop a couple of acorns right at the top. There you go. The squirrels will think that they are fresh acorns. Pop one down here. Gosh, they are so easy to attach. Gosh, I've been fiddling like crazy. Um, there we go. Please excuse that noise, that is Lancelot and his bone. <laughs> there we go, that looks pretty up there. Fantastic. And then I'm going to pop, which one? I'm going to pop that there. You're getting all wrapped up, Raffi. Huh? You wanting to get back into bed? Is it one of those days? I don't blame you, baby. It is the most awfully grim day. When I opened up the door this morning, they were like, uh-uh, mommy, it is wet, it is cold, and it is windy. But I feel like these days are the ones that really make it so Christmassy and so cozy. What am I doing? My hands are everywhere. Here are my acorns. I'm gonna use this one here. There we go, that looks gorgeous. And that, ladies and gentlemen, are our candy cane reefs finished. I am so delighted with how they turned out. It was a little bit of a process, but it was such an incredible process. So much fun, a little bit fiddly. It really brought out my creative side, which is just amazing. Now, what I would actually love to do is frost a few of these acorns, just so that it looks as though it is snowing. And then because I don't have a glue gun or anything to be able to fix it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dust a little bit of icing or even if you have white uh, spray paint you can just spray paint or if you are a Christmas elf yourself and you do have fake snow I would spray a tiny bit on or sprinkle a little bit of icing sugar and then once they are secure and in place I would then just tuck them into the reef like so but do they not look so cute? I'm genuinely over the moon with them and I think that they will look absolutely beautiful all in place. Right, it is time to place them above the Aga. So I'm just going to go and measure out just so that they are perfectly positioned and then I will show them to you in their final place where they are going to be spending Christmas in our household. So I have in fact got myself a ladder and I've popped in three tiny little nails, just super delicately, but enough that it is going to hold our gorgeous little candy canes. I'm not sure whether they look per se exactly like a candy cane, but I just love the fact that they are slightly different and that they are just so beautifully Christmassy. So I have actually got that natural rope and I've tied it to the frame just so that it is fully secure. So it's got the weight of the frame and not one of the branches. And then I'm going to simply just place it on the top, wrap it around a few times just to ensure that it is super secure and to ensure that the heights are very similar. And that there 
ladies and gentlemen, are our candy cane Christmas wreaths all finished. Just to give you a close-up, I'm also going to be placing some Christmas trees at the top just to tie in all the reds and of course Christmas, but this is a close-up of our homemade candy cane reef. I am absolutely obsessed. I love the little acorns. I love the glisten and the pop of red along with the gorgeous oranges. And I have in fact just placed a few of the acorns on the branches. And I am just over the moon with how they turned out. Oh my goodness me, they are so pretty. I'm feeling as proud as punch with my candy canes behind me. I've also popped the little Christmas trees and it is really beginning to feel like Christmas. Anywho, I have got my gingerbread house kit and this is actually the one from Biscuiteers. However, I bought it from the Royal Opera House. They are selling it online and it just comes so beautifully gift wrapped. But look at that, it is absolutely stunning. So if you don't fancy making all of the different pieces that you need in order to make a gingerbread house, let me tell you now, it is a process. I did it last year and it took, it took me a fair few days. And when I thought, actually, do you know what? I'm gonna let Biscuiteers do the hard part because in all honesty, they are professionals at making gingerbread. I am just going to pop it together. Excuse me. And we are simply going to decorate it together. So it says how to build your Biscuiteers gingerbread house. So it gives us all the instructions. It's easy to make a gorgeous looking and tasting gingerbread house to rival Hansel and Gretel. So we have the instructions here. I would highly recommend reading them. So it says making the icing. To make traditional hard set icing, sift the entire packet of raw icing sugar into a mixing bowl. Add three to four tablespoons of water and beat the mixture with a whisk, slowly adding water until the icing stands up in straight peaks. This should take around 15 minutes by hand or five to ten minutes using an electric whisker. Well, I vote electric whisker. <laughs> My fingers and arms are rather sore from making our gorgeous candy cane, so I'm definitely voting the Kenwood in order to do that. Biscuiteers top tips for decorating your house. Draw your design onto a paper before you start to ice or look online for some inspiration. I love that tip. It's important to decorate your house before you start to assemble. This way the decorations can dry flat. When sticking on the decorations, use the icing like glue. Pipe a dot and stick to the decoration whilst the icing is still wet. Be sure to save roughly half of the icing to build your house. Leave your icing to dry for at least 30 minutes before starting to assemble. Okay, well, let's have a little look at this box and have a look at what they sent inside. Oh wow, oh, wow. we have got absolutely everything in here. So these are piping bags, icing piping bags. <gasps> We've got gorgeous little Smarties. I haven't had Smarties since I was a child. Oh my goodness, look at all the colors as well. It's gorgeous. Oh, look at these. They literally look like little jewels. I am one that does like a bit of a blingy gingerbread house. Okay, then we have an enormous bag of icing sugar. Fantastic. And then in here, this is the best bit. Look at our gingerbread house. So they've got a little heart. So that is the end of our gingerbread. Oh gosh, the smell. Mm, I could just have a little mm, <laughs> nibble now, but I won't, I will refrain. Okay, so we have got to be really rather delicate with our ginger, oh no, oh no. There's been a terrible accident. <sighs> Okay, well, he's obviously going to have to be at the back. You know, we can save this. Positivity. Oh, good God, it gets worse. <laughs> oh, no, this is so sad. Okay, well, there's been a bit of a breakage in our house, but it's fine. I feel that with the icing sugar... Oh, golly. <laughs> 
you know, we can make something good out of this. It's going to be beautiful. And then we have the red food coloring. Although our house is a little bit broken, I mean, I am a little bit disappointed with that. Um, I do feel that with the icing sugar, we can patch her up. No problem, I just have to refrain from eating the little <laughs> broken bits at the bottom of the box. So, I am going to get myself a bowl. We are going to make this icing into almost like the thick glue, and then we are going to start decorating it, and then putting the entire gingerbread together. Okay, so let's do this. I have my icing sugar. I also have the Kenwood. You know what, if it's quicker, let's use it. And it says on the instructions that I need to add the icing sugar into the mixture. Oh gosh, I feel like this is going to be one of those situations where it just goes poof. <laughs> Hopefully not. So let's pop this all in. And then we need to put three to four tablespoons of water. I've got myself a little jug here. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna pop this down and start off very, very slowly. And slowly but surely, we're gonna add one tablespoon at a time until the icing sugar stands up by itself. So our icing is finally ready. I would highly recommend using a whisker. So you definitely need stiff peaks. So I would in some ways over whisk it rather than under whisk it because there is nothing worse than having runny icing because you then won't be able to decorate your gingerbread house. So I will show you the consistency. If I just use my finger and just show you in terms of the stiffness of the peaks, you literally need to be able to shake it and it doesn't move. Mm, yum, tell scrum. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm actually going to pop the white icing into one of my piping bags. I'm then going to add a dash of the red food paste, make it into almost like a pale red, spoon that into a piping bag and then add a touch more and make it into a super Christmassy bright cherry red. And then we've got three different color options. So I'm gonna get myself a spoon. I'm just going to take a few spoonfuls and pop it into that icing bag. I feel like we're going to need the majority of our icing in white, so I am going to take quite a lot of it. And then we can add a tiny bit of that food coloring and it's going to make it into a pale red. And then like I said, we're gonna add a dash more I would say that is most certainly enough white. I'm then going to lay that to one side. I'm going to add, get the food coloring. I wonder how this works. Maybe I just pour like a little drop. Ooh, no oh wowzers. Oh, it's very red. Okay, I'm gonna grab myself a teaspoon. Pop a tiny bit of that in and see what the color looks like. Gosh, a tiny bit goes a long way. If I can give you any advice at all, considering I've never used this at home box before, definitely a tiny bit goes a long way. It's turned into a real like berry red already. Look at this color. Gosh, look at it, it looks fantastic. Amazing, very pinky. I'm gonna add a touch more and I actually think I'm just gonna go with two colors because I don't want to over complicate it. I think red and white doesn't get more Christmassy than that, does it? Okay, pop that back down. Turn the mixer on. Oh, 
morsel off the side of the bowl. And that is our red icing sugar finished. Right, let's take this out. Give it a good old ding dong. Ding dong, we're in your mind. Who doesn't love a good old carol? I love it. Okay, so give this a little bit more of a mix, make sure I've got everything around the edges. Oh, it's looking so Christmassy. Show you the color. It's almost the same color as the spatula. So bright berry red. Okay, so let's get this into our piping bag. So they're fantastic. Biscuiteers have included so many. So you could literally make any color that you wanted. You could obviously have it white. You could then make it like really, really pale pink. It then went almost like a sort of like purpley color. You could then make it like berry red, Christmas red, and then go all the way through and make it um, into a burgundy. If you are maybe possibly decorating for Halloween or something like that, maybe another occasion, you could make it into what looked to be like blood, I suppose. <laughs> you know, using it for all different events through the year. I can imagine this food coloring is going to last me years. A tiny bit goes a very, very long way. Right, I've got pretty much the majority of that icing in our icing bag. I'm going to pop it all down to the bottom. Oh wow, the roomies. And then we are almost ready to start icing our gingerbread houses. So what I'll need to do is just cut a tiny, tiny, teeny, tiny little hole at the bottom. So I've got my red and I've got my white. And just move that all down to the bottom as well. Okay, it is finally time to start decorating our gingerbread houses. I have had a little look online and I'm thinking to go with something like this. So I'm gonna do this decoration on the roof. Well, I'm going to try <laughs> and do this decoration on the roof. And then I'm thinking of doing like almost snowdrops off the edges of the roof as well. And then basically outline the heart and just try and make it as pretty as possible. Now, first things first, you need to get yourself a plate, either just a surface where you are going to uh, build your gingerbread house on. And of course, I'm going with one of our Christmas plates. This is a crate and barrel. We've had it for absolute years. I'll try and find a similar one and I'll link it down below. But this is going to be the plate that our gingerbread house is going to live on. So I think what's best is if I actually bring you lower down and then you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm afraid you're going to be looking at my hands but most importantly you're going to watch me decorate this gingerbread house and fingers crossed it's going to be beautiful Okay, so this is definitely most certainly a process and I would suggest doing this if you have patience. If you don't have patience, <laughs> skip to the next vlog. <laughs> to be honest with you, I need a vodka and tonic at this point. <laughs> Anywho, we have stuck the first bit and the second bit. We now need to stick the other side. And I have done a little bit of jiggery pokery with the cracks. And you know what? She looks characteristic. <laughs> A little bit rustic for my liking, but it is the effort that counts. I always used to get A star for effort and sort of um, B or C for achievement. <laughs> I probably get about an F for achievement here, but as I said, I've spent about an hour doing this now. And um, I think by the end it will look somewhat acceptable. So I'm going to now stick the next side on. Now don't laugh when you see this bit because... This is definitely not my best side. 
Um, I now need to figure out how I'm going to, I can't put him that way because I think he might break, but hopefully, oh gosh, okay. Right, I need to put this at the end. He's gonna stick to the bottom. Oh gosh, now he's breaking. He's breaking. Okay, oh golly, my battery's dying. <laughs> I give up, I give up. What happened, did it just all fall? Oh, 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 oh no. No. God, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> okay. I think I might have to give up on this. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's so Right, the <gasps> sides are falling then. Oh, for the love of God, what is going on here? Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay. It's a great <laughs> fail. Okay, it's a great fail. I've had to rope Anna in. <laughs> I, I actually, I really tried. I really tried. You know, sometimes things don't work oh, out. <laughs> things sometimes just don't work out. And it's okay. I've cried, I've laughed until I've almost wet myself. And I have no icing left. It tastes good. It this is delicious. Fantastic. Um, yeah, much more difficult that I I had anticipated. Last year, I really managed to get it done and it looked really beautiful. I just maybe don't think my icing is as strong enough this year. Well, um, that was an epic, epic festive fail. <laughs> After hours and hours and hours. Um, well, uh, cheers. Merry Christmas. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. See you tomorrow, guys. <laughs> <laughs>